Kolkata. City of Joy, as they call it, is about three centuries old. A boiling pot of cultural, intellectual, and human values. Kolkata retains the charm of bygone days, blending new and the old, passion and sobriety in a fascinating way. Standing on the east bank of Hooghly River, the city is gateway to eastern India. Be it art, cinema, science, or the tales of freedom movement, the city holds and exhibits its various facets with poignant grace. Bengali culture has always had a special place for ponds. Various rituals, fairs and festival find a unique connection to ponds. Till about two decades back, there were over 8,000 ponds in the Kolkata municipal area. But it is not so now. Today, the city has lost about 44% of its water bodies, falling prey to increasing urbanization. With a population of more than 14 million, as the city and its suburbs eat away their own boundaries, Kolkata stands as the third most populous metropolitan area in India. In fact, the city of Kolkata was um, uh, established, rather started around a water body called Lal Dehi, which is at the center of the city, which is older than the, um, uh, this city and it is still there. Less like cities like Kolkata and I would say this is more same on any cities or big towns in the eastern India. First, there is a problem of water. And these water bodies still supply water to a large number of people who are very socio-economically are placed in a rather lower category. They don't have a pipe water supply in their house. So they have to, can use these water bodies. And in Kolkata we find that in northern Kolkata where they don't have piped water bodies, the people who don't have, but there are also very little water bodies which have been all filled up. They have to line up on the street and take bath and all other activities. Even the women has to do the same thing. So there is a everyday fight, everyday struggle on the street with this water. If you see the same scenario in the southern part of Kolkata where there are water bodies, scenario is just opposite. They are using the water bodies kind of a social interactions. There if uh, people do it much leisurely, if you become friends with others who take the bath and other things, if you in fact miss one or two days of bathing, they will ask where have you been. So, uh, doing this, uh, using these water bodies make a other kind of social connections, which was a part of our culture a lot of times. <laughs> So it's a poor man's water resources until we can arrange pipe water in every house. And second part of it, because of the population density is very high in this part of eastern India. A big part of ecology is being preserved around these water bodies. And it is a very important issue in the climate change scenario. This is a, it controls the microclimate. It uh, uh, receives and stores a quite amount of huge rainwater. And also for city safety, we have the, for firefighting, these water bodies serve a very important role. In addition to this, Kolkata has a rich inventory of heritage ponds. Dr. Mohit Rai has been studying and documenting Kolkata's water bodies for a long time and has listed 55 of these as heritage ponds. Personally, when I worked on heritage water bodies, I have defined my own uh, definition for these water bodies, which must be around 100 years old and related to some of the 
cities events or personalities and in that way if you if we set these water bodies the younger people they can know about the city's history and also this gives an importance that's how these water bodies have sustained the city's environment in a very eco friendly way and even in this modern day condition this water bodies are very important for the city the current situation of this heritage pond is not inspiring because the uh, these heritage water bodies are mostly to be protected by the municipal body but they still do not have in within them that what you can get that culture or that feeling about this so there are they have the, they have already renovated or beautified some of these water heritage water bodies but those are the mostly uh, very well known water bodies a handful of around 10 to 15 নাগকিশোর গাছ আছে ওখানে বসে ছবি আঁকতেন আর প্লাস উপরে আমাদের বিল্ডিং এ ছিলেন এটা আগে প্রচন্ড পয়পরিষ্কার ছিল এখন আস্তে আস্তে মানে পুরোটা ছোট হয়ে যাচ্ছে now this management is a very haphazard thing lot of private water bodies or those water bodies owned by government those are mostly managed by local bodies which are not a very official one always but 50 to 60% are more than the water bodies which are not managed at all which are you know gets sometimes gets some kind of a uh, renovation or some things after some years so management part is quite weak but what i learned from this the cities this community bodies the local we call clubs and others in number of them have managed these water bodies from their own kind of knowledge is quite extraordinary and we can learn from that pray 300 bochor age ei kopi toiri kora hoychilo ebong up banaras theke sadhu babader ইনস্টিটিউশন they have not made any kind of good work on this thing where nearly 5000 water bodies are existing 1 million people using it every day but we don't have a management guideline we don't have any laboratory which will you know test their water we don't have any epidemiological studies on the people who are using these water bodies so it needs a total institutional support otherwise we can will not be able to manage it very good way While the urban water supply gets more eyeballs and deliberation in the city's planning the management of these 5000 water bodies that have sustained the city's ecology for so long cannot be ignored